Shocking expose published by WorldNet Daily on July the 15th, 2010, reveals that Andrew McCarthy, the former U.S. attorney who investigated the 1998 American embassy bombing in Nairobi, Kenya, is charging that Barack Obama interfered in Kenya's internal politics, possibly in violation of the Logan Act, a centuries-old law that bars Americans who are, quote, without authority of the United States from conducting relations with any foreign government in relation to any disputes or controversies with the United States or to defeat the measures of the United States. The former top terrorism prosecutor McCarthy chides the national media for failing to investigate Barack Obama's borderline criminal activities in Kenya as a United States senator. McCarthy says Obama undermined U.S. relationships with a strong anti-terrorism ally in an African region where al-Qaeda operates. In 2006, McCarthy says that Obama campaigned for a pro-communist candidate running against Nairobi's pro-American government in what McCarthy calls an outrageous contravention of U.S. policy and probably federal law. Here is what McCarthy alleges that Barack Obama did while he was a sitting U.S. Senator from Illinois. Obama spent six days sweeping the Kenyan countryside in support of Rayla Odinga, the acclaimed socialist who was seeking the presidency of Kenya. Appearing with Odinga at campaign stops, Senator Obama gave speeches accusing the sitting Kenyan president of being corrupt and oppressive and leaving the masses in poverty. Obama's interference was more than reckless, McCarthy writes. It was borderline criminal, and that's being generous. Earlier, Odinga had visited Obama in the United States in 2004, 2005, and 2006, and Obama had sent an advisor, Mark Lippert, to Kenya in early 2006 to plan a trip by the senator, time to coincide with Odinga's campaign. But Odinga also has a strong Islamist connection. On August the 29th, 2007, Odinga signed a secret memorandum of understanding with Sheikh Abdi, chairman of the National Muslim Leaders Forum of Kenya. In exchange for Muslim support, Odinga agreed, among other things, when he went in office as president to rewrite the national constitution of Kenya to install Sharia law as the law in all Muslim declared regions. Secondly, to elevate Islam as the only true religion and give Islamist leaders an oversight role to monitor activities of all other religions. Also, to establish Sharia courts in every Kenyan divisional headquarters. Also, to ban Christian proselytizing. Also, he agreed to adopt Islamic dress codes for women. Odinga was defeated in the December 2007 election, but he accused the incumbent president of rigging the vote and then incited his supporters to riot and protest. The result was that over the next month some 1,500 Kenyans were killed and more than 500,000 displaced, with most of the violence led by Muslims who set churches ablaze and hacked Christians to death with machetes. All the while, Odinga was in regular communication with Obama. With Obama's helping hand, leftist and Islamist had combined forces to overwhelm a constitutional democracy, McCarthy says. The same alliance can be seen in the United States, McCarthy alleges, as the Obama administration reaches out to the radical Muslim Brotherhood, which according to the FBI has a plan to infiltrate and sabotage the U.S. from within. Obama and other Alinsky revolutionaries are carrying out a similar plan in the United States right now, McCarthy maintains. Could it be that Barack Obama is at least indirectly responsible for over 1,000 Kenyan deaths?